In this video, we're going to see how to connect Visual Studio to a GitHub Enterprise Edition. So GitHub Enterprise is when you host GitHub inside of a, say, a, a private network of sorts, not using the public GitHub. I have a separate video that talks about how to connect Visual Studio to GitHub.com, and I'll refer you back to my YouTube channel if that's what you want to see. But in this case, we're looking at an enterprise GitHub, which in our case is GitHub.uc.edu. GitHub.uc.edu is uh, hosted within the University of Cincinnati's network, and essentially if you're a student, faculty, or staff, uh, you have or can have an account on this GitHub page, which makes it really easy when we want to do teamwork within a class. So GitHub is a place where I've traditionally stored a lot of projects before, either this uh, public GitHub site or an enterprise site inside of the University of Cincinnati. Nonetheless, uh, it's a good place to store things, a good place to share, and also supports a lot of nice features like the ability to create branches, pull requests, merges, and the like. Now, I like to use GitHub in the classroom environment because I can make commits of changes that I'm making and then post them to GitHub, and then the student can see it as I'm doing it. It's great for going back on a quiz and, and looking at some answers, potentially, for quiz questions, but I also like that we can take a look at each change that I make and look at only what changed. So in other words, when I do a commit, you're able to look at one commit versus another commit and understand exactly what changed to give us a given feature or a given piece of functionality that I'm working on during lecture. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to install the GitHub plugin into Visual Studio. If you've already done that, you can skip uh, forward about a minute ahead of this video uh, because you only need to do that once. After you have installed the GitHub plugin, then we're going to connect to our enterprise GitHub site. So first of all, I'm going to go to Tools, then Extensions and Updates, and uh, choose Online, and I'm going to search for GitHub. Okay, and here we go, GitHub. Okay, I'll choose the first one, GitHub Extension for Visual Studio, and I'll choose Download. It requires now that I restart Visual Studio, so I'll close and I'll simply restart. We can see that it is, when I shut down Visual Studio, it's now prompting me to uh, go ahead and accept this. So we'll say modify, and we'll let this run for a few more moments. And now we see confirmation that the extension has indeed installed. So I'll click close and I'll reopen Visual Studio. Now with Visual Studio reopened, you may see a Team Explorer tab down here on the right. If you don't, just go to Team and Manage Connections and you'll be able to see uh, this Team Explorer tab. Now, previously I set up a GitHub connection to publicgithub.com and that's what you see here. What I want to do now is set up an enterprise connection. So I'm going to click on Manage Connections and connect to GitHub. Now note that GitHub Enterprise is highlighted right now. GitHub is not, and I can't go back there, but that's because in a previous video, I already created a connection to GitHub. As a matter of fact, what I found is once you've connected to one GitHub Enterprise location, uh, it won't let you connect to multiple. So if you want to connect to a different GitHub Enterprise implementation, you have to disconnect to whatever one you're connected to and then reconnect to a new uh, GitHub Enterprise installation. If that, that probably didn't make sense, forgive me if it didn't. But nonetheless, username or email. In this case, for the University of Cincinnati, our, uh, our GitHub ID is our Bearcat ID, which is also known as the 6 plus 2, the first six uh, characters in your last name, your first initial, middle initial. And then, of course, my super secret, super secure password. And now we need the GitHub server address. Okay, the GitHub server address is what you see right here. So github.uc.edu for uh, the University of Cincinnati site. And then I choose sign in, just like so. Give it a moment to think. And it shows a project that I had previously created and pushed to GitHub. Uh, as a matter of fact, if I go to my GitHub site, we'll go to my repositories. And I know I have quite a few here just uh, teaching several classes over the time. Now if I go to github.uc.edu and I put in slash jonesbr, I like this view a little bit better. So this is my own site within our GitHub, and we can take a look at the repositories that I've created. Right now I have 40 repositories, including just an experimental one that I put up earlier. So let's make a new project. I go back to Visual Studio, and I'm going to choose Create under github.uc.edu. So I need to give this a name, and let's see, we are uh, 
7024 is our class. So I'm going to call this, we'll start it out, we'll call it, um, doesn't matter, website 7024. Okay, description. So lectures for IS7024, just some kind of description. Local path. Now GitHub is a distributed version control system, which means that I have a repository on my local computer and then this repository on our enterprise site at uc.edu. So the local path tells me where we're saving this revision history on my local computer. Um, private repository means that others can't see it unless I grant them access. I will go ahead and leave this as is and now I'm going to choose create. Okay, we'll give this a moment, and uh, there we go. It looks like we have website 7024. Okay, let's go back to get to our enterprise GitHub here, and let's check. And sure enough, take a look, website 7024. Notice it created this automatically. One thing, uh, well, two things, two files it gave us. One is a git ignore. I really like the way Visual Studio does this. The goal with something like GitHub is so that members of a team can work together, but there are certain files that we do not want to synchronize, and that is files that have hard-coded dependencies to a path of a specific computer. And so many times what we'll do is we'll create what's called a .gitignore file, and the .gitignore file says, these are files that we do not want to push up to a source code repository. So those things that have hard-coded dependencies, also compiled files we typically won't push because um, a source code repository is really looking at the difference between one commit to another. And when you're looking at compiled files, that's not so efficient for one. But for two, um, uh, Compiled files can always be recompiled as long as we have the source. So our only goal is really to push the source up to GitHub. Some development environments require that you create your own gitignore. Visual Studio and the plugin was kind enough to create one for us. It also pushed a readme.md file, which is a place where we can go and we can describe what this repository is all about. Okay. So next thing I want to do is I want to commit some changes so that we can see the changes as they're going. So uh, that's why I say I really like using uh, I really like using GitHub during lecture because I can make uh, let me go ahead and close this guy out because I can uh, make changes live and then I can post them up to GitHub so that people can see them uh, one by one. So with this repository set up, I'm going to take a look at solutions. I'm going to choose new and Visual C Sharp, um, we could say WCF service application, probably a good idea to do that. Uh, we could also do an ASP.NET web application. Um, yeah, that'll work. Why don't we go ahead and just start with, well, I'll tell you what. Now we'll go with service application because I know we're eventually going to make some web services. So I'll just call this web service. Kind of a, I should probably should come up with a better name for it, but I choose web service and I choose OK. OK, we have some things going on here. I go to Solution Explorer, and you see now it has filled out some files for me. Now within this web service, I want to copy over the HTML work that we did in a previous video because I want to start, uh, I want to kind of get started in putting this into source control. So first of all, I'm going to go to Team Explorer. I'm just going to commit what I have right now, just kind of as a baseline. We have to enter a commit message, so I'm just going to say initial commit. Okay. And commit all. Now the options here, commit all means just commit to my local repository, the one that lives on my laptop. Commit all and push means commit to my local repository and then push the changes to GitHub. Commit all and sync means commit to my local repository, push the changes to GitHub, and then pull down any changes that I or anyone else might have made. Normally commit all and sync is going to be a good idea. I'll go ahead and choose commit all in sync. We will let it uh, synchronize here. And again, just the initiation of our project will take just a few moments and done. Uh, once again, I really like the way that Visual Studio handles this. It makes it very easy on us. Uh, note right now it says one commit. When I refresh, we should see two. Sure enough, we see two commits. I can click here and we can see the different commits, the initial commit that Visual Studio made, and then the one that I made, uh, the one that I just made just by making a web service. Okay, let's go ahead and add our web page. I go back to Solution Explorer. 
on this web service, uh, this is a project which is within the solution. Within this web service project, I'm going to say add, and then I'm going to say HTML page, and we'll call this one index.html. Okay, and choose OK. Now, one thing that's very interesting, take a look at what Visual Studio made for us. It made a little sample web page, and you know what? It looks remarkably similar to the one that we made in a previous video with very similar tags of HTML, head, title, body, and then a few more formatting tags that I've added in. So let me go ahead and copy this, and I'm going to paste just like so, and I'm going to save. And just and notice that the changes here appear in green, which is one other benefit of having a version control is the way that we can see changes. Now, if I wish, I can hit this play button and that will show me this page in Google Chrome, which is quite handy. So we'll give it just a moment to bring up a Chrome instance. And once again, just confirm that the page looks as we expect it to look. So take just a few more moments as it recognizes the page. And sure enough, here's our page. Looks very similar to what we did in our previous video, but if you take a look at the port, this is essentially serving up the page through a traditional web server, as opposed to what we did in the previous video, where we opened the page directly from the file system. So this gives us an idea of what the page will actually look like when we serve it through a file system, or when we serve it through a web server. Uh, Microsoft is typically going to use something called IIS or Internet Information Server to uh, display these pages. Okay, at this point I'm satisfied that I have pasted in the HTML, so I can go ahead and save. Um, if I don't want to take up any more resources, I can pause or I can stop the debugging. Let's go ahead and do that. That's going to kill that Google Chrome instance. And now I come back to Team Explorer and uh, let's take a look. So I'm going to go to Changes and notice that sure enough it does recognize that this file changed. So anytime I'm in this Team Explorer, I can go to that Changes view and I can see what has changed from my last commit to my current commit. So I'll say here, add our index.html page. And once again, we'll do a commit all in sync. We'll give this just a few moments to synchronize. And as soon as it synchronizes, there we go, we'll go back to the GitHub page. Okay, and we should see a third commit. So I refresh, and sure enough, add our index.html page. Now I click on this number on the right, and this will show me only what is different between my previous commit and the current commit. And you see in this case, it shows us with green that index.html is all new. That was an entirely new file. Let me show you one more thing. What if I change something within that file? So I go back to Visual Studio, and why don't we add a few more things? Let's say H3, which is a smaller relative font than H2. Uh, notice once again, we're going to use our proper open and close syntax. So open H3, close H3. Okay, and then maybe I'll add a line break, another one of our line breaks, and I'll say stay tuned for updates. Uh, a little bit of garbage text, something I wouldn't normally put on a web page because we know under construction is usually kind of a bad idea, but nonetheless, we really just want to demonstrate what we can do with GitHub. So with that saved, I go back to Team Explorer. Okay, click on the Home button, click on Changes, confirm that index HTML has changed, and I'll say Add More Content to index.html. And once again, uh, we'll do a commit and sync. Give this a few moments. And I'll go back to our GitHub, and this should be a fourth commit now. And sure enough, add more content, uh, content to index.html. I click on the hex number over here, and look at this. Do you notice that what has been removed is in red, and what has been added is in green? Also note this little plus here. This is a really cool part of GitHub. Uh, I can click on this, and I can add a comment and say, this page is nice but lacks meaningful content. So what we can do now is we can have a discussion in line right in, the, right in the code. And once again, great use of GitHub and a great use of GitHub in the classroom, which is why I like using it because I can give students feedback directly in code. 
So in this video, we've seen how to hook up uh, Visual Studio to an enterprise GitHub, or essentially a private GitHub site. And we've also seen the mechanics of what commits are and uh, how to work with commits. There's lots more we can talk about, but this so far is a great way to get started. I'll continue to use GitHub uh, throughout lecture so that you have this advantage, and I'll, I'll keep using the same site. Uh, so that you will be able to see all of the changes that I make in detail and specifically what caused one piece of functionality to occur uh, over and above the previous commit. So stay tuned, a lot more coming. Thank you.